We all know the last thing YouTube needs is more coil cleaning videos, but you would think with all those videos out there, none of them actually show real results. There's no pressure readings, no temperature differentials, no amperage comparisons, nothing. They all just end the same way with a pretty looking coil. Now, two weeks ago, I cleaned this unit the way a lot of videos would suggest. I sprayed a little cleaner on the outside. I rinsed it off. I didn't go through the trouble of pulling the top off and all that. Just did your basic cleaning. And it definitely helped, not going to lie. Uh, my air conditioning did seem to run a little bit better. But what we're going to do is we're going to take some baseline readings now. I'm going to take pressure readings, temperature readings, amperage draws, all of it. And then we're going to go ahead and break this thing down and do it the way the professionals say you should do it. Full breakdown, taking the sides off, top off, everything. We're going to clean it inside and out, decrease through the whole nine yards. Then I'm going to take all these readings all over again, and we're going to make a comparison. We're going to see if those lazier way videos are good enough, not good enough, or if all the extra effort is really worth it. So let's start out by taking our basic readings after a quick and simple coil cleaning. All right, so here we are at our thermostat. Our ambient temperature inside the house is 75 degrees. Our set point is 72 and this is the benchmark we're going to start off with after we do all the work and test things all over again. So here's our ambient temperature outside. See, it's a nice, toasty little 91 degrees. Yeah, I'm taking the temperature of the hot air coming out of the top of the unit, and we're reading about 110 degrees. So that gives us a 19 degree split between ambient temperature and the hot air coming out of the top of the unit. So now I'm looking at my superheat. I have a saturation temperature of about 45 degrees and my line temperature is about 55 degrees, 56. So we have about 10 or 11 degrees of superheat. Here's the temperature on my liquid line. It's right around 100 degrees and my saturation temperature on my high side is right around 109, 110. So that gives us a subcooling around 9 or 10 degrees. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm taking an amperage reading off of the compressor. This is off the Herm wire, and we're reading right about 5 amps even. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to test my capacitor under a load. I'm going to measure voltage between the common and the Herm. Here we're reading 348.2. Now, when you take your amperage reading and that voltage reading and you plug it into a formula, it's actually going to give you a live microfarad reading of how that capacitor is performing under a load. And so what we had is a 40 uh, microfarad capacitor for the compressor. We're reading 38.07. So that's about 5% off of the 40 mark. Um, the tolerance on this is plus or minus 6%. So we're still within that tolerance. Here's my temperatures across the coil. My return is 74.5 degrees. My supply is 56.8. Um, and that's given us a delta T of just under 18. Now, as someone who does this kind of work every day, if I saw all those readings, I would say the system's running pretty good. Now, let's break it down. Let's tear it apart, clean it up, and then we'll do it again. We'll see what happens. Let's get to work. All right, so that's a little bit better. Let's go ahead and get this thing together and let's get these readings going because it is hot out here. All right, we got it back together. We got it up and running. So I'm gonna let it run for about 10, 15 minutes. I'm gonna go inside and as soon as we're at the, what was it, 75 degrees, I think the room temperature was, I'm gonna start my readings. 
All right, so here we are back at 75 degrees, set point still 72. Our ambient temperature outside is 91.8. Now we're taking the temperature on the heat coming off the top of the unit and we're reading right around 111.6. Now for our superheat reading, the saturation temperature on the suction side is 49 and our line temp is 61. Now for our subcooling, the saturation temps are right around 111 and our temperature is 102. So we're still at about nine degrees subcooling. So now I'm gonna take my amperage reading off of the Herm on the compressor. And we're reading about 4.94. So now I'm gonna take the last reading. It is a voltage reading across the cap between Comet and Herm and I'm reading 348.4. So here it is, the jury is in. Here are the numbers. And I gotta tell you, I don't see anything that really stands out to me. Uh, maybe that two degree difference on the heat leaving the top of the condensing unit, but that's not much, but at least it's a little bit of improvement. But in my opinion, this is basically a statistical tie. So I gotta admit, I'm a little surprised by this one. I thought for sure doing all that work would make some kind of a difference, but guess not today. So is it worth taking the whole thing apart, spending an hour cleaning this thing if you're a technician? Maybe not. I mean, you really just got to use your judgment. If this thing's wearing a fur coat, it's going to be worth it. And if you're a homeowner doing it yourself, probably doing a lot better than a lot of other people. One thing I'll stick to, though, is always better to clean it from the inside out. Not going to budge on that one, but... I'll leave the rest for the comments section. I'm Jersey Mike. Thanks for watching.